All right, welcome back to Lectures of Economics, and we're moving on into Chapter 6. We're talking about productions and cost. Now, one of the things that we deal with when we're talking about costs are the two types of costs that exist out there, explicit costs and implicit costs for running a particular business. Explicit costs are costs that you expect. They're actual dollar expenditures, actual expenditures. So where, where you're paying for something directly, that's an explicit cost. So wages that you're paying your workers, rent that you're paying, utilities that you're paying, taxes you're paying, these are all explicit costs. Implicit costs are opportunity costs, or money that you might have made if you didn't run your own business. So imagine, if you will, if you didn't run your own business, you could have gone and saw, say, you know, been a uh, a checkout clerk at you know, Walgreens or Walmart or something like that and made you know seven, eight, nine dollars an hour and made you know, like twenty or thirty thousand dollars a year. That's an implicit cost. And when you're going to determine whether or not you're really making money in your business, you should take that into account. Because if you're not making at least that much, that thirty thousand dollars a year in your business, you're not really making a profit. Or the way economists state it is by talking about the difference between accounting profit and economic profit. Accounting profit is where the total amount of money that you make from your business, subtract all the total amount of money you spent on your business, that's accounting profit. That's whether or not your business didn't lose money. Let's leave it at that stage. Economic profit is where you take into account all of those implicit costs, the extra money you could have made. If, you, if your business makes that much money, then it's truly making what's known as economic profit. Okay, so keep, keep, keep straight the difference between accounting and economic profit with explicit and implicit costs. When we start talking about the next two or three chapters about profit, realize we're always talking about economic profit. Your might have been dollars are included into, in, the, in the profit margin that they're calculating when talking about the different things that, we, that we're going to analyze when it comes to, to checking out a particular market. So. What that leads us then to is saying, okay, well, let's move on to the other stuff. Let's start talking about production. Seems like a reasonable thing to do, right? All right, so suppose I'm running a car wash. And when it's just me by myself, I can wash five cars in a four-hour span. When I hired a friend, the two of us together, we could wash 12 cars. When we hired another friend, we could wash 18 cars. When we hired another friend on top of it, we could wash 22 cars in an hour. And, and this is what, what's often called a production schedule. This is what managers look at when they try to determine who should I hire or whether or not I should hire more people. They look at this kind of an analysis to say how much production is going to be going on when these people are hired. Now, what we often deal with is something called marginal production or how much product did an additional worker create. Marginal basically means how, in, how much increase was there if I increment my regular unit by one. So if I incre my, increase my workers by one, how much did my production go up? Well, how much did I increase our production? Well, we weren't washing any cars before, and when I started working, we washed five. When we hired the second worker, the second worker, their marginal production is how much did product increase? It increased from 5 to 12. It increased 7 units. How much did the third person increment? Well, it incremented our particular car wash by 6. And when we got the fourth one, it incremented by 4. What this here, what this marginal product analysis shows us is the law of diminishing returns. Now, what does the law of diminishing returns say? Law of diminishing returns. Basically, the catchphrase that you use for this is too many cooks spoil the broth. Or, 
The more people you hire, the more people get in each other's way. Now, that's not necessarily always true, right? I mean, notice what started happening. When I hired myself, I had an increase in production of five units. When I hired my friend, my first friend, it increased my production by seven units, right? It's still going up. When I hired my third friend, what happened? We started talking, we started having little water fights, we didn't wash as many cars. We only increased by six. The total production still, still went up. Right? We still increased our production from 12 to 18, but the growth, it only grew six units instead of prior, which was seven. And notice what the fourth person did. Yeah, it still made us wash more cars per hour, but the increase, only four units. All right? So one of the things that you're going to look at when you're dealing with production is the marginal production. How much does that one person add to the overall output for your particular business? And if at some stage you get to a point where it's not enough, don't hire them, all right? Because you'll run into the law of diminishing returns where too many cooks spoil the broth.